All right, let's start with selection. To select something, simply tap on it. To deselect, tap on an empty space. When you select a body part, you will see the selection gizmo appearing on it. The gizmo is made by three arrows that represent the three axes you can spin your body part around. Use one finger slide gesture to rotate along those two axes, the red one and the green one, or of course a combination of the two, or use this two finger twist gesture to rotate along the blue axis. Always remember that you can perform those gestures anywhere on the screen. Also note that all your tweaks, rotation and translation will happen in screen space. What does it mean? It simply means that they will be relative to your point of view. For instance, if you do this vertical motion from the front, he will tilt forward. But if I look at him from the side, it will tilt sideways. If you're confused, just look at the Gizmo's arrow and they will remind you what your gestures are going to do. When nothing is selected, you can use the same gestures to rotate the camera around. Note that you must enable this option here to be able to tilt the camera, which is set by default to stay straight up. You can also use this pin gesture to move the camera closer or further away. Some joints are hinge joints, which means they can rotate only around one axis. Those are elbows and knees. Uh, that's why even if I'm applying this kind of rotation, the elbow will only bend along his natural single degree of freedom. This just makes them much faster to pose. So say you want to rise or lower the elbow, you might be tempted to do this kind of rotation, but that would just break in human elbow. So as happens in real life, uh, it's our humerus that has to twist. So that's what we have to do here too. The gizmo also tell us which body parts are draggable with those four uh, little triangles. The most obvious body part that can be dragged is the hip. When we drag it, and we do that with this two fingers drag gesture, the whole model moves because all the body parts are children of the hips. So if we want to rise or lower the model, that's the body part we have to drag around, because that's our root. You can also move the shoulders to articulate the clavicles, or the head to tilt the neck in this way. This reduces the body part you have to select and makes the posing process faster and your poses more dynamic. Really never underestimate the clavicles when you draw, uh, so much is conveyed by them and often they make the difference between a natural pose or a more stiff one. Another tool you can use is the orientation locking. So normally the rotation of a body part will propagate through his children joints. Uh, see how rotating the belly affects the chest, the head and the arms? But if we enable this lock orientation toggle for the arm, then it will try to maintain the angle he has relative to the word and no longer maintains the angle he has with his parent. The ground. Uh, the ground also plays an important part. Even if it doesn't occlude the mannequin when the camera is below it, it still catches the shadow of the mannequin, uh, letting you draw an accurate representation of it. Furthermore, it can be used to trigger an automatic behavior of the tip of the foot that automatically aligns with the ground as soon as the ball joint reaches the ground or goes below it. From this button here, you can access the poses gallery. Uh, those are some pre-made ones, useful to give you a good start for your new pose. And from this uh, star icon here, you can access your custom pose slot. When you unlock one, you can use it every time you want to store your custom poses. You can have all the pose slots you want. You just need to unlock them once. Now, if you're happy with your pose, you can also start looking for the right camera position. And from this slider here, you can also change the field of view to create more zoomed in effect or more wide angle ones. Then we can also change the key light intensity or its direction, rotating the light with the same gestures you uh, use for the body parts. Basically, as long as this panel is open, all your tweaks will affect the light. If you want, you can also enable the grid option with this button here and adjust its size and position with the two fingers gestures. For instance, I want my grid unit to have the size of his head. That's how I do it. At this point, if you want, you can leave the app running and start drawing. 
I won't say the app is exactly lightweight, but if you don't give inputs for 5 seconds, it will drop the frame rate to 10 FPS, which will save a lot of your battery while you draw. Alternatively, you can save the image to your gallery with this button right here. And this is just undo and redo. Uh, just careful because there are not so many steps, again, to save memory. So for now, that's how the app looks like. Uh, I started a couple of years ago only for my personal use and then I had to take two weeks of vacation during this lockdown and I thought maybe someone else can find it useful, uh, let me polish it. Uh, if you enjoy it and find it useful, I can try to work some more on it, like adding a female mannequin for instance, uh, sorry about that. In any case, it was a lot of fun. And uh, one last thing. I personally don't store any of your data, which means all your progress are stored onto your phone, so if you uninstall the app, you probably will lose all your poses and unlocks, just so you know. Anyway, I don't plan to add anything like premium version or things like this so that you have to pay. Updating should work just fine unless I make some big change in the file system, but that would be for the greater good and for some cool new feature. All right, enjoy your drawings, and if you have some cool ideas uh, that is not too hard to implement, because I only have very basic knowledge of coding, uh, feel free to leave them into a comment or send me an email, especially if you find a bug or a typo. All right, ciao!